So images is sort of one of the big great detective stories you have as a biographer. Um, uh, you never seem to stop researching, people, like especially in biography, you love, people love doing the research and the writing's the hard part. Um, and images is one of the fun parts because you're always convinced that you're going to find something no one's ever seen before and then you're disappointed when you find out that someone had used it. Um, but there's a, there's a number of ways you can go about it. Like I was very lucky in the Jim Henson book, for example, in that because I had the family participating, it wasn't authorized, but they had, you know, they had signed off on it. Um, I actually could go through their private uh, scrapbooks and pull photos out of there. And there, they have a, there's an archivist with the Jim Henson company that actually scanned a lot of that. So almost anything I wanted had already been digitized and was ready to go and was ready to go for free, which is really great. Um, because the other problem you run into, for example, is stuff is proprietary. And the issue I was really concerned about with Jim Henson is Disney owns the Muppets now. So when I started trying to use any picture of, even if it was him, if he had Kermit on his arm, I had to go through the Walt Disney Company to clear Kermit's image. The fa I, it might have been a photo that came from the family. They own the photo. That's no problem. But just the fact that Kermit's in that picture, that's proprietary. I have to clear Kermit indep independently. So I was lucky again in that I had the Henson Company's attorney working with the Disney attorney trying to clear a lot of those images, but it took a long, long time. It took almost a year to clear photos because of that. Um, now, the other thing that happens is you, as, uh, when you write nonfiction, you're responsible for everything between the covers. And that means if, the cost you, if there's a cost associated with clearing photos, that comes out of your pocket. So I had two photos from Sesame Street in my Jim Henson book, and they cost me $500 a piece to clear. So, so much for tree TV. But, uh, but, you know, I went to Children's Television Workshop, so that's good. But, you know, so that, I mean, that is money I had to spend. So it was $500 a photo. Um, with something like George Lucas, once again, I jumped out of the frying pan into the fire. Disney owned Star Wars. Now this one was much harder because without him participating or even looking over my shoulder, I got nothing out of Disney. Disney didn't participate. So that's when you can go to things like Getty Images and image archives and places where you, you also have to pay the fees to use them, which come out of your pocket. But that's where you can pull a lot of neat images. And it's, you know, it's things that haven't been used a lot of times because there was somebody walking the red carpet, for example, and they snapped the picture. So there's an Associated Press photo you can use that maybe no one's used before. So, so there's a lot of places you can go for photos. When I was doing Washington Irving, um, I pulled a lot of photos out of the Library of Congress. Uh, you know, one of his friends had been a Secretary of the Navy, so I actually got a photo from the Department of the Navy. Um, Historic Hudson Valley had photos to you. So there's always a bunch of different places you can go. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they're not. Um, so that's one of the, the great um, sort of unpleasantries of writing nonfiction is if you do have to clear photos, they will come out of your pocket. So people tend to try to find those free photos when you can, um, but the more recent subjects you start doing, the harder it is to get anything that's, that's free and clear like that.